After several weeks of increased tensions, China says it has completed its military exercises around Taiwan, but says it will regularly conduct drills in the area going forward. These latest maneuvers were part of a show of force after House Speaker Nancy Pelosi led a congressional delegation to Taipei against the wishes of Beijing. So joining me now is one of the members of that delegation to Taiwan, Washington Democratic Congresswoman uh, Susan Del Bene. Uh, Congresswoman, uh, it's good to, ha- good to see you. Good so to let be me, here. Let me start with, what did you learn in Taiwan? Look, I, I, we know all the stories about it and, and, and the, the decision by China to be outraged. But what did you learn about, what did you learn in Taiwan about um, the threat and how concerned the average person living in Taiwan is with China right now? Well, we did a trip across the region. We were in Singapore, Malaysia, Taiwan, um, South Korea, and Japan. Mm -hmm. And uh, but when we landed in Taiwan, which was late in the evening, um, I guess hundreds of thousands of people had been tracking the flight. There were photographers and Mm -hmm. and the public out. We were um, when we left the airport just past midnight. There were thousands of people on the street um, welcoming us. Mm-hmm. So um, the people did it feel of Taiwan, bigger? The, the is people that, I mean, of it, Taiwan it, were very excited. This wasn't um, like Singapore. You got a few waves, but this was different. Right. right? This was different. This was different. This was uh, uh, just a. I think the people of Taiwan were very thankful that we came. Um, we were going to come earlier in the mm-hmm. year, and Speaker Pelosi got COVID, so we had to delay the trip. But. Um, you know, Taiwan's an important partner. The whole region is an important region. Um, the president has highlighted this region with the Indo-Pacific right. Economic Framework and the U.S.-Taiwan um, Initiative for 21st Century Trade. There's a lot of work happening, and we wanted to go build on that and talk to folks in the region and engage as legislators. And we saw this become something even bigger and maybe more important. People were incredibly excited that we came. Do you get a sense from our allies in, in Southeast Asia in particular, um, but particularly the countries you went to, um, that we know what side they want to be on. They want to be with the West. They want to be in a rules-based system. But China's in their backyard. And they have to tolerate them. Look at the decision the South Korean president made by just doing a phoning it in, trying to somehow balance diplomacy. What more does the United States need to do in the region to convince these uh, people who want these countries who would rather be with us, but think, I don't know if they're going to be there when when I don't know if the U.S. is going to be there when China comes for us? Well, we had three main goals on the trip. It was security, economy and governance. And I'm the vice chair of the Ways and Means Committee. So Mm -hmm. I was there primarily talking about the economic partnership Mm -hmm. and Folks are very focused on that. That's a key part of what we can do in the region is have strong relationships and strong economic relationships, um, strong supply chains, um, arrangements so that there isn't a dependency on any one country, but Mm -hmm. um, folks have economic opportunities broadly. And so the Indo-Pacific economic framework was very, very important for folks because that was one way we can continue as a region um, to engage with the region and make sure that we have strong alliances, look at things like how we are going to jointly address climate, what we can do jointly mm-hmm. in terms of trade. Um, and the, the, that ongoing relationship is part of addressing um, the kind of ongoing um, questions from the region about making sure we're going to be there and we're going to be strong economic partners and strong partners overall. Does this, um, what China did, this show of force, and, uh, does it at all, do you feel as if the United States needs to respond at some point? Not immediate, because it's all about de-escalation in the current week. Um, but do you think that we need to make it clear, maybe more weapons to Taiwan in the near term? Well, I think um, we responded by going. Um, as mm-hmm. the speaker said, we're right. not going to have our schedule determined by folks in uh, the People's Republic of China. We're going to make our own schedule, and we support the people of Taiwan. And and that's an ongoing relationship, an ongoing relationship there, an ongoing relationship with the region. That's part of the work we're going to continue to do. And we can look at what we can do, again, with these ongoing relationships right. and agreements um, to strengthen that, not only in the economy, but also ongoing security relationships, too. Uh, you're a member of Congress from Washington State. It, uh, we just finally called the Jamie Herrera Butler race. She did not make it into the top two. This is uh, Southern Washington State District. It's a Republican-leaning district. It's, it's, she would have been very hard to dislodge. Um, this is a Trump-backed candidate in Joe Kent. Um, is this a race you think the Democratic Party will target? 
Well, we have a strong Democratic candidate. Um, she actually won the primary overall, mm -hmm. and uh, she's a first-time candidate, has been doing a great job, and so um, I think she has a great chance. And uh, So are you trying to encourage the party to spend money there nationally? Well, I think it's an important district, and definitely as someone locally, um, we're going to do what we can to help support her effort. All right. Congresswoman uh, Suzanne Del Bene, good to see you. Thanks. Good to see you. Glad to have you back, and glad that the trip was safe.